Lord be with you. Welcome to the Lord's house. We begin our worship this morning, the singing of our first hymn, number 592. to turn to this time to page 268 in our hymnals as we follow the order this morning of Holy Baptism. 268. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now we receive the sign of the cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And let us pray. Almighty God and eter Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. 
You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. You led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Millie according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed sins would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she may be declared worthy of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Millie as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, answer yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. And we join together in the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, sponsors, you get to speak for Millie. Millie, do you renounce the devil? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, then answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, then answer, yes, I believe. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. If so, then answer, yes, I believe. Millie Ann Worth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. The Almighty God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace through life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Millie the new birth and the holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, 
you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The Lord be a blessing to you if you can return to your peace. Gotcha. Congregation, will you please rise? <laughs> we continue with our community, our, our liturgy, rather, on page one of our worship folders. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a calling servant of Christ, by his authority, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death. My eyes have tears, my feet from, from stumbling. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. pray. Almighty God, by your goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> the Old Testament reading for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. 
So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle from Romans 8. This is therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise as we join together in the singing of our verse and for our gospel lesson. Things are written that you may believe and Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Praise now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. His brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. Well, let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, 
I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you, I, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. <coughs> when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, we join together this morning the confession of our Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. We confess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. <clears throat> Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, mean of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the cross. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We join together in the singing of our next hymn, hymn number 430. Thank you.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, our text for this morning is our Gospel lesson from John chapter 11. When we hear the sweet words of our Lord Jesus Christ, proclaim to us hope. A hope that no man can give, but man who is also God. I am the resurrection. Last week we heard, of course, as Jesus spoke to His disciples, that the man born blind was not at fault. Neither were her, was His parents for the sins that they committed that He was born blind. This Sunday, of course, we hear the story, the very familiar story of His dear friend Lazarus. I love this story because, again, we see our Lord in His humanity. We see Him in His humanity and yet also as even being truly divine. For as Jesus speaks to His disciples, He speaks to them about the truth of who He is. That even though Lazarus is sick, Jesus stays two days longer. Yes, you read, I just read that. He remains two days longer. For what purpose? That the glory of God may be seen. For the work of Jesus and His disciples was to proclaim that the kingdom of God was at hand. That's what He sent them out to do as He was alive and after the fact of His death and resurrection. They went out to proclaim that Jesus was true God and that He had the power that only God can have. That power being that when Jesus spoke of sleep, He, of course, was only speaking of death. Now, I say only because in the eyes of Jesus, it's only death. I know, to us as humans, it's tragic, it's hurtful, it's this, it's that. All the things that we know truly that death is for us as human beings. But for the Lord, in His eyes, it's merely sleep. The disciples don't get it. Well, Lord, if He's sleeping, He will recover. In other words, He will wake up. But then He has to plainly tell them, He's dead. And they still really don't get it. They still don't understand the fact that He no longer is breathing. Yes, He was born death in His sin, in death and sin. We know that. That's what all of us were born into. We were born dead in our trespasses and sins, even as we heard this morning of this little one carried by her father and mother before the baptismal font dead in her trespasses and sins that she was born into. And yet, and yet, there's hope. That's why we're here today. That's why we had a baptism. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Yes, Millie was brought from sin into life. And yet she still, as she ages and grows, by the grace of God, will have to proclaim, I, a poor, miserable sinner, each and every day of her life. But again, Lazarus' resurrection, which will soon be happening, but yet the disciples don't know that, is for the glory of God. Just as even Millie's baptism was today. It wasn't Millie's work. It wasn't her mom and dad's work. It wasn't even my work. It was God's work. As all baptisms truly are. God bringing a dead one to life. The resurrection of the dead is what we are holding on to at this very moment. Yes, our bodies, like Lazarus, are going to die. We know that. No, it does not excite us. No, it does not make us happy. But yet it does 
allow us to grow in our faith. Even though these bodies will die as Lazarus's did, the promises that Jesus speaks to Mary and to Martha are true. Martha knew of the resurrection, for even Job proclaimed it, that even he would see the risen Savior with his own eyes and not another. That's what we also hold on to. That's our confession as believers right now that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that we believe in Him and we will rise in Him. That even though this body will no longer breathe the air around us, we will be with Him for eternity. That's why. That's why we learn and grow in our faith. That's why our faith is tested and tried as being true as only God Himself can allow into the lives of His people. Oh, the pain of death is true. We see that here. Yes, there are mourners there with Mary, with Martha. Yes, I know in the past we know that there were people who were paid to mourn. These were probably their friends and as well as the others that were there. But Mary and Martha were mourning for sure. And even here in our text, the Lord Himself. The shortest verse, of course, in Scripture which every man memorizes to their glory, Jesus wept. Yes. But why? Why did Jesus weep? Because, of course, Jesus was pained because of what death was doing on earth. Remember when God, Jesus, formed man and woman, they were to be perfect forever. Yes, He knew they were going to sin. Yes, He knew He was going to die and rise and so forth. But that's not the way they were to go if they would have just listened and believed what God said to them. Sound familiar? It should, because that's us. And we know it. We don't listen to God. We do not do what He says daily. And yes, it pains the Lord. But by the grace of God, He is the resurrection. He is the one who has made these promises, and these promises are sure. Just as they were there at the tomb of Lazarus, so they are for us. All of this was leading up to this moment when again the glory of God was going to be seen not just by a few select people. For we see here at the end of the text, many of the Jews therefore who had come with Mary, who had seen what He did, believed in Him. That's why Jesus, speaking to the Father, says that I know that you hear Me, but I do it for them. I do it for all who are around Me, such as even today. That relationship the Father and the Son. Yes, through the work of the Holy Spirit, this is what we believe. We've already confessed that. We actually heard both creeds today as I asked the sponsors, the Apostles' Creed, and as we spoke for ourselves, the Nicene Creed. As we prayed the Lord's Prayer, all these things are there, God-given, if you will, even through the Word that He has given to us that we may see and know this relationship that the Father and the Son and the Spirit have together. Three distinct persons, yet one God for you and for me. So that Jesus is able to say, roll the stone away. Yes. 
that a professor used to say this in class. Instead of, there would be an odor. It sounds so much better when they say it through the King James. It stinketh. Okay, maybe so. He was a good guy. But our Lord standing before the tomb, I don't know if you've thought about this or not, distinctly cries out, Lazarus, come out. Because if he doesn't say, Lazarus, come out, who's coming out of the tombs? Everybody. He's God. He has the power over death. We know that. We've seen it in action today. And in our own lives. Jesus Christ calls out Lazarus' name. He comes and he's given back to his sisters. Now, yes, eventually he had to die again. But the power, the very power of Jesus over something so simple as death. Again, if you thought about it that way, death, yes, we know it hurts and pains and so forth, Simple. He's God. Lazarus, come out. Why? Why does he get to say this? Because, as he told Martha, I am the resurrection. And that's the Savior that we worship. In Jesus' name, Amen. Will you please rise for prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today in thanksgiving that you have called us to be your own. Father, we thank and praise you that through the death of sin in our lives, through the water of holy baptism, you have given to us life. We thank and praise you with young Millie that you brought forward this day by her family. That she may continue to grow in the faith that you've given to her by the power of your Holy Spirit. And that we may one day, together with her, gather before you, giving thanks and praise. For you are truly our Lord and Savior, our resurrection. Gracious Father, we ask that you will be with all those who are suffering these days. That you will be a blessing to them especially those who lost loved ones in the state of Mississippi through the tornadoes of the last weekend, that you will be a blessing to them and keep them, that you will allow these families, if they do not know you, to not come have someone to proclaim to you, to them rather, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, we ask that you will also be with young Veronica Prosser as she once again is going to be having surgery this coming week, that you will be a blessing to her, allow the doctors and surgeons to use their skills to their highest ability, and that her recovery may be successful and speedy. Be with family as they travel back and forth, and be watching over them as only you can do. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you will also continue to be a blessing to those who serve us throughout our government, be with our President and Congress, the Governor of our State, and Legislature, the Mayor of our Board and its, village, and its Trustees. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you will also be with all those who serve us in the military, be it here in this country or overseas, be your if it be your will, watch over them and keep them and bring them home quickly in time of peace. Gracious Heavenly Father, be with our church body, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Be a blessing to our synodical president, our district president, and our circuit visitors. We thank and praise you, Father, for all the education that we have through our institutions of education through our synod as well, for our preschools, through our seminaries. Continue to be a blessing to our learners as well as our teachers. Gracious Heavenly Father, we lift up before you these our prayers that are also on our heart. Watch over those and keep them in your care that are upon our list and our bulletin. We thank and praise you, Father, for the blessings and ask that you will continue to be with those who suffer and ask that you will watch over those who have lost loved ones as well. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for you are truly the resurrection and the life. For this we give you thanks and praise in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Continue now with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you.
lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good, right, and say, carry that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you shall freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your holy, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again in new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, King of all creation, for you have mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. When given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
once again as we join together in the singing of the Nunc Diminis. us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that your mercy would strengthen us in the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all. His peace. Amen. Amen. We join together now in the singing of our closing hymn, hymn number 782, Muriel. Let's just do one and four, okay? One and four. Amen. 